your fractional is exactly like your full-time employee. They just are working for your company part-time. We are embedded, we're part of the team, but we're not a permanent fixture. Hey Dean, a friend of mine was telling me about a fractional CRO that they hired, and this person wanted access to their entire company, everyone in the company, and be able to talk to anybody in the company and direct people. Now, is that normal for fractionals? You know, I think it's optimal for fractionals, absolutely. But it really depends on the type of fractional engagement or relationship you have with your client. And, and there's a lot of confusion around exactly what is a fractional role versus an interim executive or a consultant. And in our prior episode, we talked a little about what a consultant is versus what a fractional is. But let's dig into the different types of fractional roles, because I think that people don't already don't really understand the scope of what this could be. So let's start with the your, your scenario you just described. Mm -hmm. The CRO wants access to all of these other people in the organization. So if you were the CEO of a company and you were hiring your full-time CRO, would you limit that person to only talk to their sales and marketing team or would you allow them to just talk to anybody in the organization? They're a full-time employee. Would you yeah. put any restrictions around them? No. You wouldn't, right? No. That's why you don't put restrictions around a fractional. So a fractional is exactly like your full-time employee. They just are working for your company part-time. Okay, so if I am a fractional and I will go into a company and they won't give me access, right? Whose fault is that? Or is there a different sort of relationship that I can have? Is there on, only one way for me as a fractional to interact with this company that I work with? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's really a couple of types of fractional roles that I kind of describe. And I'll answer that question second. Let me answer the first part of that question. Yeah. Whose fault is it? I don't know if it's whose fault it is, but I would be concerned about any kind of relationship with that client, even if I was a consultant, if I couldn't speak to the people that I'd want to speak to. I'm not just going to run around the office just like interrupting people, but if I have a reason to go talk to finance or HR, I would do it in the appropriate way and through the appropriate channels, but why would I not? So I would want to understand why your point of contact, your champion, your CEO you're working with would want you to would want to restrict that. And there may be some political things going on. So I would want to understand. But I wouldn't just lay back and say, I'm only going to talk to one person at that company. Mm -hmm. With that being said, the, the more traditional fractional role is playing that role of that full time, fully embedded executive, but just on a part time basis. But there is another sort of flavor of fractional that I actually like myself. I really enjoy this role is what I call the advisor role. The advisor role is where you're a fractional executive for that organization and you're working with a senior management team that's going to implement. So in, in my example, I'm working with a, a manufacturing company and my direct point of contact, my direct team is all through their VP of sales and marketing. He owns that piece of the business, if you will, right? He owns mm -hmm. that responsibility. He has the marketing people, the sales people, all the external service providers all fall under his area. And he ensures implementation of the strategy. But I work with him on strategy and guidance and advice to make sure he takes action. But I'm not managing the team directly. So that's the advisor. Role. It's a little more hands off not as time intensive as a, as a fractional. Whereas if I'm a fully embedded fractional, I'm running the team. I'm, I'm in the weeds. Yeah. I'm, I'm shoulder to shoulder. So is there benefits to one or the other in terms of if I am a fractional, how do I know which one to choose? Or does it matter on a per client? As a fractional, can I play both roles and just be different in different environments? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in really understanding the needs of the client and really understanding your personal desires. If you only want to just be at that advisory level, then you need to find clients that just need that advisory level support. I do both. I have clients where I'm fully embedded as um, a functioning executive. And I have clients where I'm more of the hands-off advisor in a fractional basis. So I think it's really understanding the client's need 
And one of the things I look for, and I would really advise our listeners to look for if they're thinking about this is, do they have that middle level management that can own the implementation of the strategy? Mm-hmm. If they have that person, an advisor role may be a good fit. If they don't, guess who owns it? You do, dude, right? You got to make sure that stuff gets done. So thinking about that sort of hierarchy and the team they have in place helps or position yourself correctly. Hmm. So that was going to be my next question. So thanks for answering. How (laughs) how do you determine, you know, which one the client actually needs? And it depends on their structure and whether they have management that's going to be the ones doing it. But what what happens, because this happens, when Mm -hmm. you look at at the structure and you look at all the markers and, and you realize what you need as an advisor but that's not what the client wants. The client wants someone who's fully embedded, but yeah. you can see fully that someone fully embedded also is gonna cause other issues and what you really need is the advisor. Yeah, yeah. How do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that comes up even in the consulting world, right? You think they need one thing, they think they need something else and you have to come to some level of agreement. So what I've done in the past is, again, another example, client software company had a CRO in place Technically was great, culturally was terrible. Just mm. killed, just blew the team up. So they let this person go and they needed an interim fractional CRO. But I knew that they needed that advisor role and they needed the embedded role for a short period of time. So what right. we did was we came in, I came in as a fully embedded CRO for 90 days and that allowed them to, you know, allowed me to sort of like calm the troops put some systems and strategy back in place. And then after that 90 days, we had a plan for me to find my full-time replacement. And then I would step back into the advisory role. And it worked out perfectly well. We got a great CRO, permanent CRO in place. I sort of mentored him because I'd already figured out what's going on in the business. He hit the ground running. I sort of stepped back. I actually stepped over more into the marketing side of the business, but it was good compromise because it made sense. So sometimes you have to sort of meet the client where they're at. Mm-hmm. And it's also how you structure the agreement too. And the guardrails of what you do and the amount of time you're committing to a client will, will dictate. They may think they want a full-time, fully embedded fractional. But they don't have the budget for it because it can get expensive. Oh, but yeah. it's still far less expensive than a full-time employee. Oh, yeah. Let's not look at that on the other side, though, Dean. Okay. Right? So we first we looked at, I'm going in and I can see this client and I'm making an assessment. What happens when you're already in and you realize, okay, you really needed an advisor or you really needed someone fully embedded? I would assume that if you were an advisor and they needed someone fully embedded, that's probably a harder transition if you don't want to be fully embedded. But how do you handle once you're in and realize I'm in the wrong seat? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big believer in having consistent open dialogue with my clients. Sometimes it's good news, sometimes it's not so. But if you establish that open communication, build that trust, you can come to usually it's the CEO, right? If you're at that level, you're mm-hmm. working with the CEO and you can you can share some observations. And many times they will also come to the same conclusion. So it doesn't have to be this hugely awkward thing. You just come up with a plan for some kind of transition. If you're already at your capacity with other clients and you can't take on that fully embedded role, at full fractional role, then your job is to help them find somebody that can. That may mean that you lose the gig completely, but it's still the right thing to do for the client. And I believe things come back around. And, you know, I think that's a nod, Dean, to where we started in this and understanding that this is about relationship. And as a fractional, your relationship is different because you're in a place where you have to care about the future, the values, the culture of this company as much as the company does. You are a part of the company. You are. Yeah. And you need to realize that while most fractional roles are long term and many don't have a defined end date, it isn't forever. It's just not. I've had fractional engagements that go six months. I'm in one now that's three and a half years. It's evolved over time. My role has changed. My Mm -hmm. scope has changed. My fees have changed. But it's still a match that works for everybody. But at some point that will end and that's okay. So remembering that we are embedded, we're part of the team, but we're not a permanent fixture is important to keep in mind. 
Yeah, that's great, Dean. I know that as we have this conversation and we're, we're talking about these two different roles, there are probably some of you out there listening to us who hadn't considered that there were two ways of looking at this. And that was a source of confusion and contention for you because you're feeling mismatched. I hope that we shed some light for you today here on The Growth Engineers, but I also know we probably left you with some questions. Listen, one of the things about Dean and I is we want to talk to you. We want to connect with you because we realize, and this is why we do this show, that as fractionals, you guys are the ones who help these small businesses that are growing up become medium and larger companies. Without your guidance, they can't do it. And so we want to help you. Find us. Find us on our LinkedIn. Okay? Link down below. You look us both up. Ask us questions. We want to talk. We want to help you. As always, he's Dean. I'm Atiba. We'll see you next time. See you guys.